It's our sports page summer of football where we're previewing teams in 2012. And we're pleased to be joined by the head football coach at FAU entering his first first season at the helm. It's a lot of experience both on the uh, on the college and the pro level. And the last name certainly is very familiar. We bring in. FAU head coach Carl Pellini here onto the new Sentinel Sports page. Hey, Coach Vince Ferrara and Mike Griffith. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing well, Coach. Uh, your your opportunity coming over. You had been uh, at at Nebraska with Bo and uh, got the opportunity at Florida Atlantic. What were some of the things besides obviously getting a, a the the head coaching opportunity? What were some of the things you liked about Florida Atlantic? Well, I think you know number one, you got to look at where it's located. Uh, recruiting hotbed. I mean, shoot, we should be able to sign 90% of our class from within, you know, 100 miles of our campus. Um, so that was very attractive to me. And then just, just they just built the new stadium. Um, they invested a lot of money into the program, and, and suddenly, you know, when that happens, winning football games becomes very important to a lot of people because they want those uh, seats full. So I just thought it was the right time to take a job like this one. Uh, Coach, uh, a a quote that I see you use, and I like this, first they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then you win. Is that that kind of the the mantra down there, or is that the message to the team? Uh, I mean, that that was a quote from Gandhi. uh, But I I think it's, you know, when you deal with, with college athletes, I think, you know, they're coming off a down season, and, and they make the change as, the, as uh, in terms of the head coaching position. And there's a lot of excitement, and everybody's on board, and they think, okay, that's that's going to answer all the problems. But truthfully, a 1-11 season, there's, there's a lot of problems within the program. And so what they realize pretty quick is what goes from initial excitement to, uh, uh, you know, Shoot, am I gonna? Are these the expectations that are gonna be, you know, required of me on a daily basis? And and they begin to slip a little bit. And all you gotta do is, you know, stick with it. And and we talk a lot about endurance. And, and that, hey, you know, you can you can slip, but I, I'm gonna outlast you. And my expectations aren't changing, and they're not going anywhere. So you might as well just jump on board, or or you're not gonna be a member of the program anymore. We're visiting with Carl Pellini, who's the head football coach in his first season at FAU. Great. And a no-nonsense approach from you, Coach. Obviously, football's no place for sissies or, or a lot of pity parties going on out there on the field. How long does it take, though, realistically, when you talk about what you're working with? I mean, do you got to take a step back before you take those two steps forward, or have you seen enough now to be optimistic that that first step forward will be taken even by the halfway point of this year? I think we can move forward fairly quick, at least in terms of being competitive within our conference. Uh, and, you know, one nice thing is, is I was able to sign 28 guys. You know, I had three guys counting back uh, to the previous year. I signed a number of junior college players. Um, so even even the team I coached in the spring is going to look different than the team I'm going to be coaching coming into training camp at a, at a number of key spots. So, um, I think we can make a step forward uh, pretty quickly, but you know, uh, for me, it's more of a day-to-day battle of getting getting my program going and and you know setting the structure of the program the way I want it. And, um, you know, that takes time. Uh, but one thing I do know is is two years from now, I have I have signed 53 players, and out of the 85, 53 will be mine. So I'm. I'm in a pretty good spot just in terms of, uh, um, you know, what you know what was on the horizon recruiting-wise for me and the, and the class sizes. Well, certainly you have the resources down there in South Florida, well-documented the number of players per capita, and we've all seen the amount of talent that's come out of that region. But what's the pitch? I mean, obviously the way you conduct your business and the reputation you've established for yourself, it all speaks quite well of you. But when you're going up against Miami – are you recruiting some of the same? I got to think you're recruiting some of the same guys. Why do they want to be an owl instead of a hurricane? A lot of the same guys. Well, there's a number of things, and and I've I've had a number of uh, a number of talks with with a lot of guys who've been successful in that area. Primarily, you know, Jim Levitt down at South Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, 
one thing you can recruit to is, you know, Boca Raton itself. One thing you can recruit to is potential. Um, our players love our campus. It's, it's a nice campus and a, and a good quality of life for them. You can recruit to being a big, big fish in a small pond, you know, and, and uh, being the guy versus, uh, you know, just another guy. But truthfully, it's not. I don't think I don't look at it as recruiting against Miami as much as I look at it as recruiting against, you know, the West Virginias and the Louisvilles of the world. And 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 one thing you got to be is very patient. One thing I also know is South Florida kids. A lot of them come back, meaning they they'll go and they'll they'll try to play somewhere else, and then they'll come back. Um, whether it's the weather, you know, a lot of reasons they like to be play at home, and so. Even if a kid commits to a Virginia Tech or a West Virginia or a, or a Penn State or a Minnesota, I'm going to stay on them, and we're going to continue to develop a relationship with them. And if they go up there and they last a year, and for some reason it doesn't work out for them, um, my arms are open. Come, come down. We've already established a relationship, and, and hopefully my number will be the one they call when they come back. No question, local knowledge is a huge advantage for you, just your proximity. What are some of the things that you do to try and establish relationships with these high school coaches? Because we know that's really where it all starts when you're trying to lock down uh, and build fences and, and lock down your area. Well, you know, camps and clinics, number one. I, I really I got out there aggressively, uh, Palm Beach, Dayton, Broward counties, uh, um, during the during the uh, winter recruiting time, I, I, I got into a lot of schools. I think we were in every school in Florida uh, during spring recruiting, and um, if not, we were in a, a huge percentage of them. Um, we have uh, we have the camps. Uh, our camps in the summer it was the first year this year that we had you know both team camps and individual camps, and um, got a lot of coaches to work those camps going to continue to do that in the future so any way we can involve the high school coaches we're doing it hopefully we're going to have uh, uh, some marquee high school matchups in our stadium uh, with some of the better Florida high school football teams so any way we can get those guys on campus we're doing it I'll, I'll bet you we've had upwards of of a uh, hundred coaches and 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 for the 400 to 450 unofficial visitors on campus for campus tours and stadium tours since we've taken the job. We're visiting with Carl Pellini, who's in his first year, going in his first year as head coach at FAU, coming over, was uh, from Nebraska, where he was defensive coordinator and on the staff there for a number of years and spent a lot of times in the, a lot of time in the Midwest as well. Coach, talk about from a scheme standpoint what you're going to do. We've heard that you're going to move towards a spread offense offensively. Will that be out of the gate or talk about that transition to that? Uh, well, r- yeah, right out of the gate. We've, we've kind of changed everything in the spring. and, and uh, But I do believe in the running game, uh, I, you know, and, and I believe in using multiple personnel groupings and, and really putting stress on, on the defense in terms of personnel. So, you know, there's a lot of different versions of the spread. And I hired Brian Wright from Montana State. And one thing, you know, I really did my research and, and got the guy I wanted. And one thing that I really noticed, you know, they they were in the top five in terms of offensive production. Every year he was at Montana State. And, um, you know, they, they competed at the national level. What he was able to do within the same framework of the offense was – build it around his personnel. And that's what really attracted me to Brian is when his quarterback was the marquee guy, you know, they, they built the offense around him. The last couple years, maybe they weren't as strong at the quarterback position, so they, they built it around an eye back, and, and uh, he ran for a lot of yards. And So without just wholesale change in the offense, he was really able to take, take advantage of his talent. And I think that's important in a, in a coordinator. You have a a redshirt senior quarterback in in Graham Wilbert and uh, and uh, talk about that quarterback competition uh, there for you guys to run that offense. Well, Graham, you know Graham was a starter a year ago. Was, uh, probably didn't have as good a junior year as he would have hoped. He did have a good spring. Uh, right on his heels is is a guy that was in the program, Stephen Curtis, who's a little more 
mobile and probably more of a dual threat guy. And then we feel we signed the top junior college quarterback in the country in Melvin German um, out of Pearl River Community College in Mississippi. And so he'll be on campus in, in August and fighting for that spot. So it'll be really interesting. And depending on which one wins it, you know, it'll kind of determine the direction of, of our offense. 4-3 base defense. Talk about what you have there and some of your strengths and weaknesses. Well, we're really talented, I think, at the linebacker position. And I say that, you know, even comparing them with our talent here favorably to the linebackers we had at Nebraska, and they were pretty good. Hmm. Uh, I think defensive backfield, we're very strong. Uh, but going from a 3-4 to a 4-3, it'll be interesting how our, how our defensive line holds up. I think we have some talent there. We've uh, addressed it at the junior college level, and we signed a bunch of high school kids, but probably won't be ready to help us this year. So if we can stay healthy, we could pretty be pretty good on defense, um, but we're not real deep uh, on the defensive line. But one thing I do like is looking at these Sunbelt offenses. You know, we were in the Big Ten a year ago. I don't know that it compares to that, but I spent four years in the Big 12 and defending the spread style offense in the Big 12, and I think the Sunbelt really mirrors the offenses that I saw at you know, Oklahoma State and Kansas at the time and, and Oklahoma, Texas Tech. So um, I think our scheme really fits in well in this conference. Coach, generally, would you say it's more? it would be more difficult to transition from a 3-4 to a 4-3 or from a 4-3 to a 3-4? Well, I say from a 3-4 to a 4-3. And, uh, but the truth is, you know, I have aspects. I do. I use a little bit of both. Uh, two years ago, they were a four-three, so it's not like you know they were a three-four for the last ten years, and I'm coming in and trying to change the personnel. They they just went to three-four just a year ago, and so there's a lot of guys I've got. I've got I've got a number of very talented uh, outside linebacker types from a three-four who actually played with their hand on the ground two years ago. So. That's the hardest position to fill when you're when you're moving from one to the other. And I, but, but we do have some quality DMs on campus, so I'm not too concerned about it. You're playing. Uh, we're visiting with Carl Pelini, FAU head football coach here in our Sports Page Summer of Football. Have a few SEC opponents on your schedule at Georgia, uh, at Alabama. Give me a quick thought on those two schools. Oh, it gets easy. No, <laughs> you know, both very, uh, both. You know, obviously very good, very physical football teams, very talented. Uh, it's, you know, I don't, I don't think too much about that right now. I'm more worried about just getting us better and, and getting to the point where we're as good as we can be when we go in there and, and, and just compete as best as we can. Do you have any relationships or are you, do you know any of the guys, Derek Dooley or anyone on the Tennessee staff right now? Oh, yeah, I know I know Derek pretty well. In fact, um, um well, when he first took the job, you know, we, we had a lot of discussions. Sure. Well, Coach, we really appreciate it. he leaves it at that. We yeah. had a lot of discussions <laughs> in the Bellini way. I love it. True to form, yeah. Coach. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coach, well done. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good luck to you this year, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Good Thank luck, you. Coach.